这个是我们的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个新的一个
It is not surprising that China has been listed as the worst internet abuser in the world in Freedom House's 2020 report. Last December, a 30-year-old Tibetan monomad, Pundruk Dorji from Machin Golok Prefecture, was sentenced to one year imprisonment for posting a video of His Holiness's teaching on Weibo, a microblogging site. Similarly, China is ranked at the near bottom at 177th in the 2020 World Press Freedom Index, compiled by Reporters Without Borders. Heavily fortified in a digital age, it is nearly impossible to get information out of Tibet. This past January, we received news of the self-immolation protest by 26-year-old Shurmo from Diro, Diro Shevchuko village, five years after the event. This sheds light on the extent of information control and surveillance being carried out in Tibet. Shurmo is one of the 155 Tibetans who have self-immolated since 2009. 133 Tibetans have died following their protests. The stranglehold of Chinese rule in Tibet has driven Tibetans inside Tibet to resort to extreme measures to voice their resentments against the policies and practices that threaten Tibetan identity, religion, and culture. Even as they were engulfed in flames, they called for the freedom for the Tibetan people and the rightful return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The reality in Tibet is reflected in the Freedom House's annual report of 2021, which lists Tibet as the least free region in the world alongside Syria. Today, China's tentacles have reached beyond Tibet by using its growing economic clout to jeopardize global democracy. According to Freedom House, China conducts the most sophisticated, global, and comprehensive campaign of transnational repression in the world. It highlights the CCP's efforts to control and pressure Chinese citizens, political dissidents, and minority communities such as Tibetans, Uyghurs, and Hong Kong beyond its borders. The democracies around the globe must come together to thwart such a assault on global democracy. We thank the U.S. government for signing into law the Tibetan Policy and Support Act, TPSA 2020. The TPSA significantly updates the U.S. policy and support for Tibet. It firmly asserts the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama and other Tibetan Buddhist leaders are religious matters and all decisions pertaining to reincarnations rest solely on the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan people, and the Tibetan Buddhist community. It further warns of sanctions against any Chinese authorities who interfere in this matter. The bill formally acknowledges the Central Tibetan Administration and recognizes the significance of Tibet's environment and its plateaus. We also thank all the organizations and individuals who supported in the swift passage of the bill. We are grateful to the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken for assuring a speedy appointment of the U.S. Special Coordinator for Tibet Issues. We also urge the Biden administration for swift appointment of the U.S. Special Coordinator and also for the further implementations of key legislation such as the reciprocal as access to Tibet Act 2018 and TPSA 2020. The U.S. CECC has recommended the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Administration to urge the Chinese government to cease treating Dalai Lama as a security threat and resume dialogue with the represent representatives of His Holiness without any preconditions. My administration is committed to the middle way approach in seeking genuine autonomy for all of Tibet. We stand with the, our brothers and sisters in Tibet, especially with the political prisoners, who remain resolute despite the inhumane treatment and torture they suffer in Chinese prisons. We call on the Chinese government to release all political prisoners of conscience, including the 11th Panchen Lama. My administration has worked towards furthering our cause and carrying the voices of Tibetans in Tibet to the world. 
At the same time, we have directed our efforts to further the welfare of the Tibetan diaspora. It has been an honor and we thank all of you for your support. As we move to the final round of elections for the Sikyong and the 17th Parliament, we urge responsible participation, especially on social media. We enjoy the benefits of democracy bestowed upon us by our great leader, and we must exercise this right responsibly. We must remember the, to honor the hopes and aspirations of our people in Tibet. We can do so by strengthening our de democracy in exile and our cause for freedom and justice. We bow in obeisance to His Holiness, whose tireless efforts have led to global support for the Tibet cause and the establishment of a resilient Tibetan administration and community in exile. Our continued struggle for freedom would not be possible without the support of our friends from around the globe. The Kashak, on behalf of the Tibetans in and outside Tibet, especially thanks the government of India it's and its people for their continued generosity and support. We thank leaders, governments, parliaments, organizations, and individuals who stand for justice, equality, and freedom, and who continue to support the just cause of Tibet. Lastly, we pray for the long and healthy life of His Holiness, the great 14th Dalai Lama. We pray for the earliest arrival of the day when the ray of peace and freedom will shine upon the land of snows. Thank <laughs> you.